Good morning, River Tree. I want to greet all of you, no matter what setting you are in this morning. I know that we've got some people who are gathered in their homes and some people that are gathered with other people and then others that are gathered at the River Tree Building or Resale Depot or Vito's Espresso. I want to say good morning and thank you so much for being flexible. We have had to learn over the last three months the reality of something that we have talked about for a very long time and that's that the church is not the building. The church is the people. And the last thing that I said before we left our last in-person gathering in March was that regardless of what happens next, church was not canceled. And we weren't. We were deployed. We began gathering as a body, but we couldn't gather in person. And so we gathered around screens in our homes and we've been worshiping together and we've been praying together and we've been learning together. We've continued that in this season. I have watched as you have been the church. I've watched as you have gathered around people who have mourned this, the, during this season, people who have lost loved ones, people who have lost jobs, and I have watched as you have supported people. I've watched as you have celebrated with people who had things to celebrate and nobody to celebrate with, and you found creative ways to be able to support and celebrate people. I have watched as you have done things just to, to care for and to lift the spirits of the people around you, and I want to thank you for being the church. Over the last several months, we raised over $5,000 in our gas to groceries fund. And that allowed us to be generous. That allowed us to feed hundreds of people in partnership with the Battle Creek Food Bank through our drive through food events right here at our River Tree building. It allowed us to help pay for things like vet bills and car repairs and utility bills and immigration fees and all sorts of different things that we were able to help with in a very real way because of your generosity. We're entering into a new phase. And now we're going to need to continue to be creative in this phase as we, as we begin these watch parties. I don't know how long we will be in this kind of a setting. I've told our team to plan for at least a month. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking stock. We're going to be taking stock of how things go as far as the the spread of the virus in our area. And we're going to be taking stock of how it goes for churches in general as we all begin this process and we all learn from each other. Throughout this whole thing, I've been a part of a gathering of area pastors. Every Wednesday, we get on a Zoom meeting. We've been praying together and learning from each other. And we continue to learn from each other as we enter into this next season. And so I just want to thank you for continuing to be, to be the people of God in this season. Over the next several weeks, our teaching team is going to be sharing, and we're going to be talking about some things that I really think will be helpful to help us emotionally process the experience that we have just been through and that we are still in the midst of. Pastor Tamara is going to be speaking this morning, and she's going to talk about something called lament. And she's actually going to to have us write our own lament. She's going to walk us through that process. And so what I want to encourage you to do is to actually get a paper and a pen ready because in a little bit, you're going to wish that you had had them with you. I do want to thank you for continuing to be generous during this time and continuing to give to the mission of River Tree. You can use our text to give system. You can text 84321, text the amount that you want to give to that number. And the first time you do it, it will walk you through a very simple setup process, but that will allow us to continue to move the mission of the church forward as we are in this season. I love you. I want to thank you for gathering with us, and I'm going to turn things over to the worship team. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. We know we've got some of you at our watch locations. So glad that you were able to join um, and that we can get together, commune together, and uh, worship together this morning. So join us now. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed 
Blessed be your name We're found in the desert place The walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Blessed be your name The sun shining down on me The world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering There's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will sing Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name You give and take away You give and take away My heart will choose to say The blessed be Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name.
Lord, we are grateful for your grace and for your love. And yes, Lord, we are grateful for your grace and for your love. And yes, Lord, we are grateful for your grace and for your love. And yes, Lord, we are grateful for your grace and for
Hi, I'm Pastor Tamar Eisman, the pastor of community engagement at River Tree and Resale Depot. And I was just thinking about these last three months. And if there was one word you could describe the last three months, what would it be? For me, the first word that pops into my mind is heavy. It may not be the best word to describe the last three months, but it's the first one that comes to me, just a sense of heaviness. And it started with COVID-19 and then um, fears about economic recession and then natural disasters. And there was even some freak insect infestations happening and then violence. Lots of violence. And I think for many of us, you know, we started this time um, just trying to be flexible and adapt and, you know, keep your chin up, do whatever's possible. We're in this together. We'll get through this. And I just saw a lot of that kind of good, positive response. But as each crisis has been layered on top of each other, it's, it's just gotten harder. And um, in the last three weeks, seeing all these videos of violence, oh man, it, there's like a sorrow that has crept into my soul that just hasn't left. And it's been heavy. How does a person of faith respond to crisis? When I look around us, it, it seems to me there's two storms we have to respond to right now. There's the storm that's going on out in our world around us, and then there's a storm that's happening inside. And it seems to me most people are responding to the storm outside by what's happening inside of them, um, by what they fear the most and many times. For example, if a person fears disease and death the most, they're gonna be most likely very in favor of stay at home orders and disinfecting constantly and, and masks and social distancing and all that kind of stuff. If a person most fears economic failure, maybe losing their home or their job, um, then they're not as much for those things like a stay-at-home order. They're probably more for like, let's get the economy going and businesses back open and resuming activities and things like that. If a person most fears social isolation, they're probably not going to be fond of wearing masks and social distancing and those regulations. If a person most fears losing their rights, they're probably not going to be in favor of any of the regulations. And so it seems to me most people have been responding to the outside storm based on not their political party, but more deeply rooted based on what they fear the most. And I know for me sometimes that's how I've responded. But as a person of faith, it strikes me that my response should be based on not my fear, but on the word of God. My response should be based on not my preferences, not what other people think, but on the word of God. And the word of God actually says a lot about the storm that we're going through right now. It, it says a lot about pandemics and how to provide for your family during an economic famine. Um, it, it talks about racial injustice and oppression. It talks about how to respond to our governing authorities when they're unreasonable or just downright wrong. It talks about all of that. And, and so here at River Tree, our teaching team is going through each Sunday trying to address what does God work? What does God's word say about these things? 
that we're going through. And, and last week, Pastor Andy did um, a message on what God's word says about oppression and, and racial injustice. And if you didn't get a chance to listen or watch that message, I encourage you to. Today, I'm going to focus on what God's word says about how to respond to the storm going on inside of us. Um, how do we express our faith and respond in faith when we are grappling with feelings of fear or deep sorrow or frustration? You know, you may not be experiencing those feelings right at this moment, but I bet at the, in the last three months you have at some point. You've experienced a lot of frustration or some fears or anger or just this overwhelming sense of, ugh. Oh, this is heaviness and sorrow. So how, how do we express our faith when that is what's happening inside of us? Well, God's word gives more than one answer to this question, but probably the least known answer, um, the answer that God's word provides that American Christians know the least about is to lament. Lament is a prayer form in the Bible. There's probably about a hundred or more laments in the Bible. And it's a tool that God gives us. Um, and it's a tool that was used by King David, by Jesus, by nearly every hero of the faith at one point or another um, used the tool of lament. It's a prayer form used by people who believe in God who have faith and yet are experiencing deep anguish, just feelings of fear or feelings of anger or frustration or feelings of deep sorrow. So um, today, we're not just going to learn about lament. We're actually going to practice it. I think of um, James where it says, do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And so today, we're not just going to listen. We're actually going to do what God's word says, and we're going to practice this tool that he gives us called lament. And so I'm going to lead you step by step. It's going to be very simple. Um, but I'm going to lead you in writing your own lament. And don't worry, because I just think, man, God is so good. When he gives us a tool, they're simple. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist or a poet um, to use God's tools. God's tools are very simple and they're very practical, practical, and, and they can be used by anybody, even, even children. So we're just going to go step by step through this. You're going to need something to write with, paper, pen, pencil. If you don't write words yet, you're, um, maybe you're a little too young for writing words, just have... Um, an adult near you record your lament for you. That's cool. I'd love to see some laments written by our children from our River Tree family. Um, so everybody can participate in this, but you just are going to need something to write with, and you're going to need honesty. You're going to need courage to be honest with yourself and with God. Lament actually doesn't even require you to be honest with other people. It just requires you to be honest with God. So that's where we're headed. If you participate in this, I hope you do. I think it's going to be a very meaningful and profound experience for you. Um, and it will equip you, um, not just for this moment right now, but for times in the future as well. The Word of God tells us that when God created the world, He created it good, completely good, and perfect. And then He lovingly entrusted it to us, and we broke it. We just, right away, we broke it thoroughly. It's kind of like this. God, um, God is the source of light. He's the source of love and life. And he created our world, and he created it with order and, and, and with a specific design. And then he breathed his life into it. 
and it was good. And then he lovingly entrusted it to us. And the first thing we did when we got it was to rebel against God and to break away from the from him, from, from the source of light, from the source of life, from the very thing that was holding the world together. Now, when you break away from your source of light, you fall into darkness. If you break away from your source of life, you begin to die. And, and that's exactly what has happened to our world and to us. As we've broken away from God, our world has fallen into death and destruction and darkness. The good news is God is wooing us back to him. And he promises that one day he will completely restore the world to himself. And it will one day Again, be full of nothing but life and light. And if we want, we can choose to be a part of that. I want you to, to imagine for a moment what that will be like when God restores the earth to himself. Now, first of all, we're not going to be angels with harps on clouds, okay? That's not in the Bible. Um, but what the Bible says is that God is going to make a new heaven and a new earth, and they'll no longer be separated, but they'll be brought together. And we'll live on this new earth that's been completely restored. It, it will probably be quite familiar, a lot like our earth that we know now. It just won't be broken. There will be no disease and no death. There will be no evil of any kind. No one hurting anyone else. Not even animals are going to hunt each other anymore. There will be no natural disasters. The Bible says that the seasons will be perfectly regulated. Can you imagine that? I want you to write on your paper just this phrase, a new earth where, just write that down, a new earth where. And then complete that phrase with whatever promise of the new earth that you most long for. What is it? A new earth where no one is treated unjustly. A new earth where no one dies. And I can hug all my loved ones. <laughs> A new earth where the sun always shines. That's in scripture. A new earth where the streets are paved with gold. That's in scripture. That might be a clue to a new earth where there's no economic disparity. I mean, everybody lives on a street paved with gold. One of the promises that I long for is that it's a new earth where God's presence will always be with us. His presence, his warmth, his love, his healing power, his peace and joy will just always be with us. I want you to take a moment. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and just complete that phrase. Even if you don't believe in the Bible, even if you think it's only a dream, it's a good dream. So what part of the new earth and all that promise and hope stands for that you long for most? A new earth where? Just complete that phrase.
that the God that we do not see exists and that he is good and that his promises that are good will come true. That's, that's what faith is all about. The difficult part about faith is from our human perspective, God is exceedingly slow in fulfilling his promises. We believe in him. We believe he's good. We believe he has these good things in store for him. We love his promises that he, he's going to bring peace, that he's going to bring unity, that he's going to heal our bodies and our relationships and our world, and there's going to be justice. And, you know, these are good things. And faith believes that God will bring them about. But faith also longs for them to be brought about. And from the human perspective, it's sometimes you just think, God, why? Why does, this, why does it take you so long? Don't, can't you see that our world needs those things right now? We, we need them now. We need unity. We need peace. We need justice. We need healing. We need these things now in a big way, God. So why does it take you so long? And every great hero of the faith had to wrestle with this, including Jesus. You see, faith recognizes that, number one, God exists. Number two, God is in control. Number three, that God is good. And number four, that the bad things that are happening do not agree with his character. So faith asks, why? Why, God? And faith recognizes that when things are going poorly, the person to complain to, the person to lament to, the person to vent to is God. You see, he's the one responsible. He's the one in control. He's the one that is capable of fixing it. And laments recognize this. And, and so every lament begins with a complaint to God, usually in the form of a why question. Even Jesus did this. He's on the cross. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sometimes we think that um, having faith means that we will never doubt or that we will always be peaceful and happy and da, 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 you know. But that's not actually the portrait the Bible paints of faith. Over and over again, God's word gives us examples of people of great faith who had doubts who struggled with fear and frustration and directed their fear and frustration to God because that's what faith does. Faith knows God is the only one capable of really changing things. And so it is an act of faith to bring our complaints to God. Why? Why, God, do you allow COVID-19? Why, God, did you let my loved one die? Why, God, did you let me lose my job? Why, God, do you just seem to be silent and you don't answer my prayer? Why, God, do you let my people be mistreated? I'm going to pray, and then I want you to write down your why God question. What complaint do you need to bring before him? It might have to do with COVID or another crisis our nation or world is facing, it may be something much closer to home 
for you. But what is that why question that you need to bring before God? Won't you pray with me? And then if you need to pause the video to write that down, go ahead and pause the video. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are big enough for all our doubts and our fears and our frustrations and for our sorrow. And that you are not intimidated or threatened by our questions at all. I thank you that you do hear us and that you are good and you have a good future in store for us. And I thank you that you are working in our world, but God, we don't always see your work and we don't always understand your work. So please listen to us now as we ask you why. of the lament is usually that complaint to God, that why question. The second part is just a statement, a sentence or two about what is going on in your life or in your world that is causing you anguish, that is causing you to be frustrated or fearful or just have deep sorrow or feelings of hopelessness. Um, so they're just simple sentences. For Here's some examples from Scripture. For example, Psalm 22, it starts with that complaining question for God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? And then next comes a statement. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Another example is from a book in the Bible called Habakkuk. And again, it starts with a complaining question. How long, O oh Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Well, I'm sorry, that just really hit me. Why do you make me look at injustice? I have had to view more injustice in the last three weeks than I've ever wanted. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? After the questions of complaint come the statement of frustration. Death and destruction are before me. There is strife. Conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. That sound familiar? There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. Again, people of faith understand that ultimately God is in control. So he is the one that we direct our complaints to. So from your human perspective, what is happening right now that is frustrating to you or is, you know, gives you anxiety or, or just deep sorrow? Your statements do not have to be as poetic as Habakkuk's. I mean, just a simple sentence in your own 
words, the way you would normally talk is best. It could be um, something as easily as I've run out of money and can't pay the rent. Or I can't see my family. Or just, God, everyone is so angry. What is it that is causing you to have the feelings of frustration or fear or anguish or sorrow? Just one or two simple sentences. statement of faith. And, and this is the order laments go in. They start with the complaints, with the facts about what's happening, and then a statement of faith. And the statement of faith never comes as a, a change of emotion and a change of feeling. The statement of faith comes in spite of the feelings of anguish. You see, it isn't the absence of fear or frustration or doubt that makes your faith great. It's choosing to have hope in the midst of your fear or frustration or doubt that makes your faith great. And we see this most beautifully in Jesus when he was hanging on the cross and he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then his next words, he says, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He trusts God with his spirit, even while feeling forsaken by God. That is faith. And so now is the time for you to make your statement of faith. I want you to choose one of these phrases. These are all taken from different laments in the Bible. You can choose one of them. Yet will I trust you. Yet will I praise you. Yet will I wait on you. Yet will I call on you. Choose one of those. Or if you want, you can use Jesus' phrase where he says, into your hands, I, and then you're going to have to finish that one. What are you going to place into God's hands? So you could use that one. Into your hands, I, you can finish that phrase. Or choose one of these other statements. It's a statement of your commitment to continuing your relationship with God, even though it might seem a little dicey at the time. Yet will I trust you, yet will I praise you, yet will I wait on you, yet will I call on you. Go ahead and choose one of those phrases and write it down.
faith is not quite done yet. The next part of your statement of faith is a statement of who God says he is. Not who we think we are, um, but who God says he is in his word. So on the screen, it's going to show a few statements, and you can choose one of these, or you can choose one of your own that you know from Scripture. Um, but here's some examples. For you are, everybody write that down, for you are, and you can pl complete it with one of these, for you are the maker of heaven and earth. For you are the almighty God. For you are my rescuer. For you are my heavenly father. For you are my shelter in times of storm. For you are my ever-present help in times of danger. There are so many ways you can complete that sentence from scripture. Who? your lament with the promise of the new earth that you wrote at the very beginning of this message. You finish your lament with a statement of the future hope that you're holding on to. So go ahead and write on your paper and it's going to show on the screen. You will bring me to a new earth where you will bring me to a new earth where and, and then just complete that however you completed it earlier. your lament. Uh, go ahead and just take a moment to piece it all together. We're going to show a slide that gives you the order, but it starts with your why God complaint and then your statement of frustration, just statement of reality. This is what's going on right now. And then your yet will I statement. That is your commitment to continuing your relationship with God. Yet will I. And then the for you are, which is your statement that acknowledges God is who he says he is. For you are. And then lastly, the you will bring me to a new earth where. And this is your statement of the future hope. Now, you'll notice that the lament doesn't answer the question why. Those questions that you had in the beginning, it, it doesn't answer them. And that's because God hasn't given us an answer yet. And faith is holding on to the hope, even when it doesn't seem justified. Even when we haven't got our response from God yet. That is faith. So, now, what do you do with your lament? 
Well, I hope you do what the biblical writers did. I hope you, first of all, speak it aloud to God because it is a prayer that is meant to be spoken to God. And I know for myself, I can have thoughts and and feelings, but they never seem quite real until I vocalize it to someone. And and the thoughts that you recorded here come from deep within you, and they need to be vocalized and brought to light before God. And when you bring them to light before God, then he acknowledges them and, and he can respond to them. So often I think God doesn't respond to us until we are honest with him about what's really going on inside of us. So speak it aloud to God. In a moment, I'm going to pray, and then we'll just pause, and, this, and you'll have your moment to just speak your lament. If you're with a group, if you're with a small group in a home, maybe you want to take turns doing it. If you're in a larger group, you can just say it very quietly to yourself in in just a very quiet, quiet voice. But we're going to speak them aloud. And then I hope you do the second thing that the biblical writers did, which was to share them. Uh, You don't have to, but it is an amazing and powerful way to shine your light of what true faith looks like. And so I hope you take your lament and you'll just post it in the comment section for this video. Um, Maybe you'll want to share the video. Um, Maybe you'll want to share your lament on your Facebook feed or something like that. Um, But please share. We need Christians who share in biblical ways right now who don't just share whatever thought comes off the top of their head first, or don't just share what they saw somebody else post, but who go through a biblical response and share with people what it looks like for a Christian to biblically respond to what's going on in our world right now. So I hope you share it. And I hope you share any other message that helps you too. Not just this one, but you know, Share other messages. Be a light. If you have lost hope or maybe never had hope in Jesus Christ, I just want to invite you to hope. God loves you. And he has not abandoned you. And he is quietly working behind the scenes in your life and calling you back to himself. And if you trust him, he will bring healing to you. And some of it will be fast and quick and wonderful. And some of the healing will take a long time. The healing we have to wait for is better than no healing at all. So I encourage you to trust in Jesus Christ and the hope that he brings. Will you pray with me now? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you know we are just human. And you don't expect us to have your perspective all the time and to know why you're doing what you're doing. And you invite us to freely share with you our doubts, our fears, our frustrations, and and just bring it all to you. And I thank you that you're big enough to handle it and it doesn't intimidate you and And you don't forsake us when we doubt or when we're frustrated with you. And so, God, I I pray that you'll just bless right now this act of faith we're about to take, where we bring our complaints to you, where we bring our why questions to you. But we also bring our commitment of faith to continue trusting in you and believing that You are who you say you are and that you will bring the hope that you have promised to us. Will you give us courage right now? And will you please listen to us? And God, for those of us who have lost hope or who 
have never had hope in you. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit and turn our hearts to you so that we can trust you and receive your healing power in our lives, Lord. Do that work in us. And now, O oh Lord, listen as we ask you why. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.